It's the professional master chef knockouts. Last time, two more chefs were sent home, leaving the strongest ten. Oh, my days. Now, they'll be split into two groups, cooking as a team for a VIP dinner. Right, I'm going to plate it. You're plating it. I yeah. thought I had Arno plating. Before returning to fight for their place in the competition. Wow. What a punch of flavour you have brought to the table. I think I'm getting a lot better with the pressure. If I can keep calm, keep focused, then I can cook to my best ability. The competition is ridiculous right now, and I want to be able to set myself apart from everyone else. I totally didn't, in my wildest dreams, think that I would be on the verge of being in the semi-finals of MasterChef The Professionals. I want to see excitement in their cooking. They can't play it safe. This is when they have to really stand out from the crowd to be noticed. Chefs, welcome to the Royal Society of Medicine. We've seen you cook as individuals all the way through the competition, but today you're going to have to work together as a team. You are here to cook a three-course fine dining dinner for the president and his five guests. We really want you to impress them today. It's going to have to be good. Off you go. Cooking for the president of the medical society, this guy saves yeah, sure. thousands of lives potentially all, all around the, the planet, so, you know, pressure's on, isn't it? I'm really excited about uh, working with these guys. The wealth of experience we've got between the five of us is going to be incredible, and we're not on our own. We're in a team today, so, you know, we live and die by that. The chefs only have 30 minutes to plan the three-course menu. Mmm, interesting. Dover salmon. Nice. Yeah. Food fried? The president of the Royal Society of Medicine is a vegetarian, so all courses the chefs create must have a vegetarian option. What about for starter, a gazpacho? Because it's low, like a summer's got really clean. Beautiful. Pickle though. veg. The amount of ingredients here. I've got two ideas. Salt, yeah, and I've got lamb. Are you going on lamb now? Well, two I ideas. Think, yeah, so just before we start. I think lamb is better, personally. For the uh, vegetarian, I'm thinking of miso mash, asparagus. But I'm also thinking pear. How about we make a cauliflower ice cream as a mousse bouche? So, so cauliflower. yeah? Cauliflower. Yeah, great idea. As well as the three courses, the team has decided to push themselves and add another two dishes to their menu. Guys. We've asked you to do three courses. Why have you introduced a pre-starter and a pre-dessert? We want to exceed your expectations, and that's why we've decided to go down the route of five courses. Who's the head chef? We're all Th that's the head chef. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. not that's yeah. not really something we've discussed. It's very been very much a team effort. You have two hours before your first course is due. I suggest you get moving. Good luck. Right, come on, let's have it. Talk, 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 Communication talk, 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 is the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've got a lot of work, haven't yeah. they? They've got a lot of work to do. Two extra dishes, plus the vegetarian, on top of their original three courses. Every 20 minutes, there's got to be a course going out of this kitchen. We're pretty impressed that they can pull that off. Yeah. Has anyone got a, t a timer on? And then we can see where we're at in an hour. Matt. Oh, OK. Rich is taking charge of the first extra course, a cauliflower ice cream pre-starter. The cauliflower is on to cook, and he's made a start on the ice cream base. There's a puree going through the ice cream. I don't want it to overstep. I'm just going to get past so it's nice and smooth, then we're going to get it frozen in the ice cream machine. Rich, what goes with the ice cream, then? It's literally a cauliflower base and I'm going to spice with a bit of nutmeg. The ice cream's going to sit on cauliflower? It's going to sit on cauliflower couscous. It's all about the cauliflower? It's all about the cauliflower. 
<laughs> what, what did everyone think when you came up with an ice cream to start this menu off with? They, they actually all went, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Rubbish. They did, yeah. I, I promise yeah, you. Away. I promise you. They may have said it, but I'm <laughs> sure that's not it. what they were thinking. Okay, well, they should have said something, because it's too late now. <laughs> Pre-starter is intriguing, it's different, because the mind says ice cream is sweet, this ice cream is going to have a savoury feeling all about it, so already they're playing on the minds of our guests right from the word get-go. It's a palate cleanser, all about cauliflower, so if there's a lot of that, you'll have that taste of cauliflower before you've started the, the main course. Matt is also racing through the prep for his starter of gazpacho with pickled vegetables. I don't know how I feel about putting chilli into this. Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. Like one split. Just one, yeah. Usually, gazpacho is marinated overnight to maximise its flavour. But Matt only has a couple of hours to perfect his. I'm just going to make a quick little veg stock now, just to so get as much flavour as we can into the gazpacho. Uh, and then we're going to make a really light sort of uh, roasted pepper and tomato base. It's, it's, quite, it's quite delicate. It's going to pack a lot of flavour. I do like the sound of what Matt's doing. He's sweating off the onions and he's sweating off the garlic to get the maximum flavour in the short period of time that he's got to marinate this soup. My main concern is a cold starter straight after a cold ice cream of cauliflower. That'll be my only reservation. On the other side of the kitchen, Wayne and Arnu are butchering the meat for their main course of lamb cooked three ways. We've got the belly and we've got the sweetbreads to go yeah. in there. So I'm only thinking I like, literally want well, one cutlet each. So we'll take it, take it up to here. Yeah. The most important thing about lamb three ways is making sure that you can taste all three elements. The braised lamb has got to be beautiful and tender. The sweetbreads can't afford for them to be overcooked because they'll be like rubber. If they're undercooked, they'll be all slimy. And of course, the loin, it's got to be served pink. But the most important thing with lamb is a good sauce. With the lamb breast on to braise, Wayne can make a start on the extensive prep for the garnish. So tell me, what are we doing? Currently, I'm uh, preparing the artichokes for artichoke barragul. We've got Jerusalem artichoke puree, roasted sep and gerol mushrooms, braised baby jam and peas. Baby jam and peas with the barragul? Yes. OK. Well, barragul normally has a little sauce to go with it, but he hasn't really thought about that yet, whether the barragul is just going to be pretty little artichokes on top of a puree, or is it going to be completely separate? He needs to start thinking how this plate of food is going to look. As well as the pre-starter, Rich, has also taken on the challenge of creating the vegetarian main course for the host. Its ingredients are pears and asparagus, with a miso mash and a ginger emulsion. Rich, fabulous compliment to a uh, asparagus dish is always a poached egg or anything. Yeah, what stops you from doing that? Because it's, it's normal. My mum's a vegetarian, she hates asparagus with poached egg. This guy, I predict, has been everywhere and probably seen everything by now and doesn't want that sort of run-of-the-mill vegetarian food. I certainly wouldn't. Um, so I wanted to do something a little bit different. Arnu is not only working on the main course, he's also in charge of the second extra course, a pre-dessert of creme brulee with a gooseberry compote. So I think there's got to be a bit of texture. I want a bit, a bit of biscuit or some kind of crumb to, to go with this pre-dessert. The final course is a Caribbean baked Alaska. I am thrilled to be on a dessert today. Yeah, I've never been so happy to see some flour and some sugar in my life. So, uh, yeah, I'm chuffed. Zoe has come up with a cake recipe using chocolate and cardamom that will form the base of the dessert. Zoe, what are you making? I've got my mango puree on the go, um, and then I'm shortly going to get on my coconut ice cream, and then just some different little bits of garnish. So we've got the um, pistachio paste and some white chocolate, which I'm going to decorate with lime zest and some black sesame seeds. Sounds like a lot of work. Yes. Are you going to have some help on this? Yes, um, I think we've got a newt first, so I'm going to flip in between that whilst right. I'm doing One this. Anu. Anu, you need to push it. Zoe needs you on here, so. I'll be there, yes. Don't be afraid to tell the lads what to do in here, yeah? Absolutely not. Um, you know, <laughs> girls have to be ten times tougher in the kitchen than a man does, so... Yeah, you know it. <laughs> the Royal Society of Medicine 
was founded in 1805. It has had many distinguished members, including honorary fellows, Charles Darwin, Louis Pasteur, and Sigmund Freud. Today, the society is at the forefront of life-changing and life-saving discoveries in the medical world. I mean, we put on a, a number of events each year, many of which are catered, and uh, we certainly eat well. The cooks are under a lot of pressure because they want to do well, and they know that we expect a fantastic meal. So we'll wait with anticipation. So we've got an hour until the first course goes out. You all on track, Rich? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm done. Cool? Yeah. I'm, I'm, okay? yeah, I'm just going to get this softened, then I'm just ready to blitz and pickle that. So in, a, in about half an hour, yeah. I'm, I'm a spare pair of hands. I'm doing pretty dessert. If you want to hand plating up, because you need to get my sponge on, that's really the main thing now. So so. Right. Chefs, you've got 50 minutes for your first course to go out. Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, yeah, chef. On the meat main, the lamb breast has finished braising and Arnoux is working on the sauce. Because the sauce is a bit weak, but once we put a bit of butter in there, it's Yeah, be good. I know, I really want this to be a oomph sauce. It will, it yeah. will. Do you need all this liquid? No. No, OK, so think like a chef. Yes. Take it maximum flavour in that sauce, OK? Yes. There's now less than an hour until service. First up will be Rich. The ice cream is in, it's working, it's about 10 minutes off. Put it in the blast freezer, I'll get some rochets done and then they can sit in the freezer ready to go. Cauliflower couscous is done, the charred cauliflower to garnish with is done, job done, boxed off. Meanwhile, Matt is still refining the flavours of his gazpacho starter. Yeah, man. Is it too intense? No, no, not at all. It's lovely. Whoa. There's not a lot of liquid in there, is there? There's just a marinade. Yeah, but I've got a, I've got a veg stock to, to bring into it, to bring, to get more from it. Yeah. Is, it, is the veg stock chilling down? Veg, no. Uh, no, it's not. Honestly, time just goes just so fast, just so fast, and you, you just forget. Rich is juggling the pre-starter and cooking the vegetarian main. OK, I've got the miso mash. Yeah. I've got the pear. Uh -huh. I've got the blanched variations of asparagus. Yeah. I've got the little pickle there. Yeah. And I've got the ginger butter. Oh, we're doing it. I don't know how we're doing it, but we're doing it. Oh, no. Sponge. In the pastry section, Zoe has made the chocolate sponge but still has three main elements to make for the baked Alaska. Tempering some chocolate now. Um, these are going to be little shards that are going to come around the dish. Um, sponge is done, it's cooling down. Anu's having been out now, he's been on the meringue. My ice cream mix is now on the go. Just need to get that chilled down and get that churn in as quick as possible. Um, that's my only main worry right now. Arnu is also making great progress with the pre-dessert. What's in the bottom? Uh, creme brulee. And what's this? Cuisse uh, brulee compote. Uh, so that's cooked? That hasn't been set, it's cooked. In the oven? And then we've got the apple gel there on top of it. And if we have time, we'll make a little nougat in something to go in for texture. We'll see how we get on with the rest. Cool. You have just 30 minutes before your first course is due to be served. It went in cold. Went in cold, but it's not churned yet. And it's not churned yet, no. Time is ticking away, and the cauliflower ice cream for the pre-starter is still not set. It's been in for a long time now. OK, you're going to have to get that. Big time. Contact. This is your first course. This is a course you didn't need to do. I'm just paranoid about it not setting. It looks too loose. It's been in for a while now as is well. Is it the mix, though? It could be the mix. It could be. Arnold, are you, is he pretty much on it, are you? Yeah, I am on it, yeah. Marcus and I would have been impressed with three perfect courses. Five is the added pressure that might just send our chefs down a spiral that we don't want to see them go on. Chefs, listen up. I'd like you to know that your guests have arrived. Sophie, have you done your wardrobes and stuff today? I did my rounds, yes. 
What are we hoping for today, do you think? Oh, I am hoping mm. for great innovation. Mm, okay. Yes, I'm hoping yeah. something I've not had before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And plenty of it. <laughs> With service imminent, the first course is still up in the air. You have 20 minutes before this ice cream is due to be served. You need to make a decision as a team. Are you going to chance it and just leave it in here and see what happens in 20 minutes? Worst case scenario, have we got um, a canister? A gas gun. A gas gun that we can pop it in. And then pop it in the blast freezer yeah. before it goes up. That's yeah. a perfect idea. Let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. Well done. Right. It's starting to go. 20 minutes could be the difference between a set ice cream and not at the end of the day. So if it is set, it's set. If it's not, if it's a little bit loose, we're going to blast freeze it. It'll be aerated and, and frozen, should be in theory. That's the best we can do at this stage. The pressure's on and if this ice cream is not what they want, none of these chefs are going to be happy. Unfortunately, it's going to have a ripple effect through the whole menu. On the main course, there's still concern about the quality of the sauce. Should it be boiling like that? No, it shouldn't, shouldn't be boiling. I think something else has gone into it. What is I it? I think more liquid has gone from, from the pan. Oh, no. Uh, oh. No, 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 no. All I've done was I've, all I've put in there is that, and then I've reduced brandy right down. Oh, okay. There's no more liquid gone into it. Literally, what was in that has gone into that. That's okay. all. OK. Just, just we've still got time. More. Chefs. You've got seven minutes for your first course. As this does not look like a kitchen, this is about to start service. Seven minutes, I want to see the first course up. Thanks. Oh. Right, it sounds like we're starting with an essence of cauliflower as an amuse-bouche, which is a challenge, because I actually don't like cauliflower. Yeah. Try and do it in that corner if you can. I think there'll be something looking very light, but actually probably tasting absolutely fantastic. Full of flame. Yeah. You may be a convert to the cauliflower. Ice cream? Coming now, chef. <laughs> you got it? Shoot. You got less than two minutes. Well, their last ten minutes is just take the bacon. Happy Rich, it's worked. Pray to the ice cream gods. <laughs> what else is there to go on here? Uh, just the basil oil and the cauliflower. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, guys. Cheers. See you soon. The amuse bouche is cauliflower ice cream. Rainbow cauliflower couscous and caramelized cauliflower shavings, finished with a basil oil. Very, very, very beautifully presented. It is. It, is it looks great, doesn't it? And, and nothing like a cauliflower, which is wonderful. The main body of it isn't as much flavour as I thought it was going to be. It's very It's soft. dominated, yeah. dominated yeah. by salt, yeah. and, and you don't get the <laughs> strength of the cauliflower that you might have anticipated. Yeah. To start a meal with it, I think I'm not, I'm not sure about that as a as a. So as you're, a, not as a a you're not a fan of salty not, cauliflower? But I think... uh, it hasn't converted me as yet. It's a big plate. Why a bag bigger seasoning in the background? I find the actual ice cream has, has, doesn't have the impact of the flavour, but because he's got the shavings, it really does follow through and you've got the cauliflower flavour there. Matt, you've got 15 minutes for the next yeah. course, your course. Yes, Chef. I love spatula, <laughs> so I have very high hopes of this. I'm interested in these pickled baby vegetables. Uh, I think they'll make or break it. Why is the garnish on the edge of that plate? We wanted the, the bowl to be a little bit shallow and the lid to be big and to, ideally to go across. How do you eat it? Just push it in, get involved. Guys, you have three minutes before the next course is ready. Max. Do you want more in the bowl? Yeah, I want more in the bowl. Matt. Do you want more in the bowl? Matt. Ah. Uh, guys, you're cutting this very fine. 
We ready? Yeah, let's go. Service, please. The starter is red pepper and tomato gazpacho. Served with pickled vegetables, there's baby beetroot, heirloom tomato and chili. Finished with basil oil and the beetroot pickling liquor. The smell is phenomenal. Mm. Oh, it's so intense mm. and uh, yes, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, yum, yum. Mm. And I really like the, 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 the sort of um, flavour of the basil oil. Mm -hmm. And I think that the red that was going through it, I think that is intense beetroot. And, and that's a lovely a combination. Yeah, mm. good. Pickled vegetables work really, really well in this. And it's got a lovely mm. texture. That is an outstanding gazpacho. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly mm. one of the best I've ever had. It really does take gazpacho to another level. You can taste the sweetness of the tomatoes and the roasted pepper coming through. And I think it's a nice soup. It's a very really well-made gazpacho. Wasn't very happy with that starter. Why? Uh, I don't know. It looked beautiful. It, ta it tasted amazing. Yeah, so what are you worrying about? All right, guys, clean down and get ready. Main course is going 20 minutes from now. On the vegetarian main, Zoe is helping Rich by caramelising the pears while he puts the finishing touches to the asparagus. So that's a very unusual dish. I don't think I've ever had this combination of asparagus, miso and ginger, and so I think that's going to be a very interesting dish. Now Wayne and Arnu need to cook the lamb to perfection for the main. Right, yeah. okay, good caramelization on that. Okay. Okay. Into the Russian out with the probe, 44 degrees at 160, all right? There is still a debate between them over how to finish the lamb sauce. The thing is, look at the layer of fat on the top of it. Yeah. If we add butter into that, that's going to be more fat. It's not. It, it will thicken it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I'd, I'm not I'd sure. put butter in, but if, you know, if you're happy with it, just keep it to that. See? It's raw. Just get on 200. Just get it in there. Are we going to be ready? Yes, chef. Uh, yes, chef. Yes, yeah. Wayne, how are we looking? Yeah, we're about four minutes off, I think. The main course, uh, lamb three ways. It'll be really interesting to see what the three ways are, because uh, most of us love lamb, I guess, but to make it really interesting, it will be the challenge here. I, I can see the meat and the sauce. Where's the garnish? Everything's going to be cooked in about one minute. Do you want to play with minute. it so we can get it out quicker? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Chefs, can I just ask a question? Do we know what this plate of food is going to look like? And if, and if so, who's in charge? Right, I'm going to plate it. You're plating it. I yeah. thought I had just heard Arno plating. Are you going to plate it, Arno? I need you to bring your gets in trio, so... Okay, fine. I'm going to plate up the main course for the vegetarian now. Right, okay. Both of them, yeah? Are you right. ready? Yeah. Let's go. Right. right, guys, we are supposed to be going. The guests are waiting. Yes, yeah. How's the lamb? It's a uh, touch overcooked. Who cooked the lamb? Team effort, that one was. Are, are you going to serve it? Yeah, I'm going to serve it. Because... You're going to serve overcooked lamb, yeah? Well, it's part of the dish, unfortunately. Really disappointed with the cooking of the lamb, though. Service, please. The main course is lamb three ways. Roast loin, braised breast, and pan-fried sweetbread. Jerusalem artichoke puree, with a garnish of artichoke barigoul, charred baby gem and peas. Finished with a lamb and armagnac reduction. The vegetarian main course is pickled asparagus ribbons and spears on a miso mash with caramelized pear, a soy and chili reduction, and a ginger emulsion. 
once again, I think they've absolutely won with presentation again. Um, that's really strong. And it's almost a sort of organised chaos. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying it. Presentation is absolutely fantastic. I'm trying to work out what's what here. There are some things here that are obviously going to be a surprise. Yes, vegetarian food is often sometimes a better option. I'd be very curious to see how I... You're jealous already, I am aren't jealous, you? I am <laughs> jealous. I'm sort of thinking, ooh. So I think the, the actual fillet is beautifully cooked. I would probably have mine a little bit pinker. Personally, I would have liked it maybe a little bit less cooked. Mm. But uh, flavour, mm. quality of meat, it's absolutely too. superb. Well, this is absolutely delicious. So what flavours do you have in that? Well, you can taste the ginger, you can taste the miso, and you, the asparagus is perfectly cooked. Uh, but it really is delicious and very unusual. Oh, how lovely. So you can stay jealous. <laughs> <laughs> the lamb fillet is slightly over, but I love the sauce and I love the sweet bread. My two favourite things on this plate. The sauce is nice. It's got a lovely flavour in the background. Um, I think all the effort was worth it. Guys, don't take your foot off the pedal. It's done. It's a pre-dessert. Oh, yeah. I hope it is sort of is a more dessert than pre. <laughs> it's got, got things that I absolutely love: gooseberry, um, um, apple, and creme brulee. I would have chosen that on a on, on a menu, so I've got high expectations um, of that. All right, guys, pass them this way, then I can cream them. Otherwise, I've got to get in between you. Yes, yeah, chef. Yep, time's up now. Yep, ready? Ready to go. Yep. Happy with that, Arno? It's exactly what we wanted to do. Yep. Yes. Service, please. The pre-dessert is creme brulee with gooseberry compote, apple gel and chantilly cream topped with macadamia and hazelnut nougatine. Mm -hmm. The secret is to delve. Mm. 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 This is stunning. Oh, this, this has exceeded my expectations. I mean, There's a fantastic flavour of, of gooseberries there, but it goes so well with the apple and the, and the creme and the, and the brulee. Yeah, this, is, uh, mm. this is clever. This is very good. Well, I think this is a, this is a surprise, and um, it's a jolly good surprise, and I'd like more of it, please. Yeah. It's delicious, and then the levels. I think Arnold's done so well here, running around, helping out in every section, yet still being able to focus on his course. All five chefs can now pull together to get out the final course. Tastes good, Zoe. Is it set? Is it? No, it's not set yet. At all. Yeah, it is. It is set partially. The ice cream hasn't uh, chilled down as much as we'd like. Um, it's obviously really hot in here today, and unfortunately, the blast chiller isn't as great as we thought it was going to be. Zoe, do you want me to rocher them onto a tray and then get them blast frozen, sort of solid? You can, yeah. Yeah. Dessert is a Caribbean baked Alaska. Baked Alaska, I understand. The Caribbean twist is going to be curious. I think it's a great way to end a menu because none of us know what it's going to be, really. So that really will be a surprise. Yeah. How runny is that ice cream? It's runny as. Take, take a look. I don't want to open the door anymore. Oh, man. Exactly. So right, shut the door, okay. let it freeze like that, right. and then set it Let's on top. Just, yeah. uh, how are we doing? Yeah, we're ready to go. I'm going to start plating up on garnish now. The ice cream could set a little bit harder, but unfortunately, it's not quite cold enough in that blast chiller. All right, you're going to leave so, it until last minute? Last minute, yeah, okay. absolutely. You've got yep. the let's go out with a bang, yeah? Absolutely. Is this all pending on the ice cream setting on time? This is pending on the ice cream setting on time, absolutely. Chefs, we've got a couple of minutes left. Are we going to be ready? Yes, sir. We've got to be ready, are we? Yes, sir. Coconuts on the pass. Happy with the ice cream? Um, I could be happier with it, but it's it's okay. It's going to stay put. That ice cream should be rock hard before it goes inside a baked Alaska. Are you willing to send it like this? I don't think we've got another choice at the okay. moment. Okay. Okay. Let's go, guys. 
Can anyone else do the... Yeah, guys, can we get... Let's get the ice cream going. This is what it needs to look like. That. Another blowtorch quickly. I've got to go now. Three, guys. One, two, three, go. Go, 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 go. Oh. Well done. That was a struggle, wasn't it? Anyway. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Dessert is Caribbean baked Alaska, a chocolate and cardamom cake topped with coconut ice cream, an Italian meringue, served with mango puree, pistachio cream, and white chocolate shards. It's phenomenal. There's so much anticipation now about what, what this contains, because there could all be all sorts of hidden gems in there, and we don't know what it is. I think it looks gorgeous. Wow. Now, that is a surprise. Oh, wow. It's quite heavy. And there's not enough ice cream. Mm. So there's a, there's a base of cake, which is, is nice, but there's a lot of it. And then, then meringue. Um, and those are the two dominant features of this dish. I would have preferred to finish with the gooseberry. Yeah, mm. yes. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't recall ever receiving a dessert this big, unless my mum was making it for, for like, my brothers and I. <laughs> the sponge is a little bit on the thick side. The meringue is beautiful and light. We all know Baked Alaska works when it's done well. Unfortunately, today, it just didn't quite work for Zoe and the team, because this was a team effort. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. That was well done. amazing. Oh, that was good. That was good. On behalf of my colleagues, I'd like to start by thanking you all for a wonderful meal. We've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. If this was a restaurant, I think all of us would come back. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very thank much. You. That was a tough day in the kitchen today. This challenge was never going to be easy. I thought they did a great job. Yes, they added an extra two courses, which just added the extra pressure that was not needed. There were issues in the kitchen, but they worked them out. We've all shown that we're not here to make the numbers up. The idea of pushing ourselves was to be able to demonstrate that to Marcus and Monica, and to each other, really. It's been great making a bond with the guys, but it is competition, so it's not going to be a problem for me going back into the MasterChef kitchens at all. You know, I want to win. <laughs> working as part of a brigade was great, but we do all know that it is an individual competition. And at the end of the day, someone has to go home. And it'll be sad to see them leave, but hopefully it won't be me. This competition has become very addictive, and I want more and more and more. And, uh, and if it's the last day to die, I'll be very disappointed. The semi-final is literally one judgment away, and I don't want to mess that up. Chefs, it was really, really good to watch you cook as a team. You're now on your own. This is it, the showstopper dish. This plate of food between you and the semi-final. You have 90 minutes, and it's got to be your best dish yet. Off you go. Matt's food is super simple in its presentation, but it certainly packs big flavour. I think just add a few more elements, a couple of twists into his food, and we're going to be in for some special eating today. I guess the simplicity of my food means that I haven't got anything to hide behind. Everything's got to be on point, seasoned perfectly. Put my head on the block, but hopefully 
fingers crossed it's my day again today. Matt, Hello. what is your showstopper dish today? Uh, roasted halibut, spinach, samphire, lobster bisque sauce. I'm doing an aioli with that and a Spanish cabaneros prawns. Uh, I like the sounds of the dish. I love the ingredients that you're using, but there's nowhere to hide on this dish, isn't there? No, there's nowhere to hide. And that's what I've said from, from the start, that I'm not masking it with anything. I'm just sort of wearing my heart on my sleeve with the food that I do. I'm surprised to be this far, so I'm just going to enjoy myself. Um, and hopefully deliver you a phenomenal dish today as a showstopper. Let's hope so. The halibut, it's a beautiful flat fish. Here we want it lovely and moist and just falling apart. The cabanero prawns, if he cooks them just like this, they'll have the beautiful bright red colour coming through. You don't want the bisque to be too reduced. You don't want it to be too rich. The bisque could kill this dish if it's too strong. Chefs, you've had 20 minutes. 20 minutes gone. Arno is a chef that is growing through the competition. If Arno can keep developing his style, we're going to be in for a great plate of food today. I feel I need to be a lot more forceful in my cooking. I need to fine tune it. This time in the competition now, there's no, uh, no space for mistakes. Arno, what is your showstopper dish? So my dish is a roasted quail and langoustine with caramelised endive and quail and yolotti. And yolotti? Yes. Where does this dish come from? I love langoustines and I love quail, so a bit of a dilemma. And actually, quail and langoustine works really well, but they're both quite sweet in flavour. So my thought process is introducing an endive should balance out both flavours can you manage that? Because you're all about big, bold flavours. I've, I've realised that all the dishes I've done so far have been very bold and very strong. Mm. I need to show you that uh, I'm a more delicate chef as well. Are you nervous? I'm not nervous. When it's going to go, I feel it's not me. If it's me, I've done what I could. I like the idea of the fact that Arno's using the whole quail. He's making a sauce that he can glaze these beautiful little ballantines that he's going to make with the quail leg. He's also going to be making some little annulotti of, uh, of quail. Annulotti is, is a beautiful, delicate little parcel. And you want three, maybe five little ones on the plate. You're going to have a very bitter endive, which is going to braise down. It sometimes can just overpower the other flavours on the plate. Arnold wants to show us his delicate side. I just hope he can, because if this bouillabaisse sauce is too strong or too heavy, it can overtake the whole dish. Chefs, 40 minutes have gone. You have 50 minutes left. Rich is an exciting chef. He loves to push the barriers with his food from the countries that he's very passionate about. He has some amazing ideas. I love the way this chef makes me think about food. That's why he's still here. You think that you know yourself when you get to my age, and this competition is showing me that you really don't. I'm growing with it, and it's teaching me a hell of a lot about myself as a person, that's for sure. Today, I'm going to do a uh, bacon dash risotto. Um, I'm doing that with yeah, half poached langoustine tails. Um, with a black garlic emulsion and some avocado puree. And there's grapefruit in the risotto. Grapefruit juice instead of lemon or lime, yeah. I've never had a dish like this, have you? No. no. But that's not surprising coming from you, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think this dish has it? I think so. The flavour combinations with the risotto, I think it's an amazing dish. I hope you guys do too. Wow, there's a lot happening on this plate of food. Grapefruit is the one ingredient here that I'm not too sure about. Grapefruit is a very strong, acidic flavour. A risotto is a showstopper. I'm not yet convinced. But if there's one thing we know about Rich, is he's always pushed us to think outside of the box, to challenge us when we are eating his food. I'm worried, I'm excited, and I'm nervous. Chefs, you've got half an hour left for your showstopper dish. We've seen some fabulous cookery from Wayne in this competition. 
this chef has really come into his own. His food is big, it's bold, it has depth of flavour. He really wants to stay in the competition and go through to the semi-finals. He is hungry for that place. I don't think anybody cooking now is going to be making any mistakes. So you have to make sure that everything you do is absolutely perfect. I'm feeling confident, I'm feeling happy, and I'm quite calm that I've got it within me to do that. Wayne, showstopper dish, what is it? I'm doing uh, roasted pork tenderloin with langoustines, uh, burnt onion, pea puree, apple and chorizo salad, and endive. Where's this dish from, Wayne? Um, this is a dish that I've been toying with for a while, so um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's time to unleash it. Wow, salad, pork, long steam. There's also a bisque going on there as well. There are three bisques in this kitchen today. Wayne's got to get this tasting delicious. I've not had bisque with a pork before, so this is going to be an interesting tasting for me. Pork tenderloin, I'm always a little bit wary. It is a very lean meat with hardly any fat in it whatsoever. It's got to be spot on. Chefs, you've got 20 minutes left. The further and further you get in this journey, the more commitment you find yourself giving it because, you know, you are so close to that, to that finishing line. So, yeah, I'm giving this competition everything I've got at the moment. Zoe, our development chef, who's gaining more confidence as the competition has gone on. I admire her spirit. She's coming here ready to fight it out for that place in the semi-final. How are you, Zoe? I'm very well, thank you. Cooking with a smile? I'm always cooking with a smile when it's dessert. What are you making for us then? Uh, so today is going to be my take on high tea. So I'm doing you a pistachio and olive oil cake, which will be covered with a chocolate golden dome. And then I'm doing you a raspberry jam jelly with chocolate macaroons, chocolate gravel, a white chocolate sesame seed mousse, and a chai chocolate tea, which we'll pour over the dome. You are pushing yourself, Zoe. It's, it's the showstopper. Um, and if today is not a day to push yourself, then I don't know what is. So I'm going all out today. The theatre that Zoe is bringing into this dessert is when she's going to pour the tea over the chocolate dome. It should melt away to reveal something beautiful underneath. Pistachio and olive oil cake. This is a cake of balance. It needs to be moist. You can't afford to have it too dry. You want to taste the pistachio and the richness of olive oil. Chocolate work takes a lot of skill. We know it gets very warm within this kitchen. She's got to get the temperatures right of that chocolate so it's going to hold. The important thing with the macaroons is the texture. It should be crunchy yet still very soft in the middle. You have just five minutes left. Jeff, you've got two minutes. That's it. Time's up. Step back. First up is Wayne, serving pan-fried pork loin with poached langoustines. There's a salad of endive, chorizo and apple, fresh peas, a pea puree and charred onion. It's finished with a langoustine bisque. Overall, the combination of flavours, uh, the, the, the pork, the longestine, 
the freshness of the apple on the plate and the lovely background flavour of the chorizo, I really like. The pork's beautifully cooked. It's getting a little bit dark around the outside. The bisque is big and bold in flavour. It's a strong, rich sauce, almost a little bit too strong. But then the chorizo and the apple sort of brings it all back. I'm liking this dish, I'm just not loving it. The langoustines with the pork work very well. You've just been a bit heavy-handed on this very strong, big sauce. I hope I've done enough with that dish. I haven't made any mistakes, it's just small little detail. So, um, yeah, hopefully I've done enough. Next, Anu has prepared quail three ways. A ballotine of thigh, pan-fried breast, an annulotti pasta filled with quail and pickled walnut. Served with roasted langoustine, braised endive and broad beans, finished with a bouillabaisse sauce and a quail reduction. Can I just say I really like the presentation and you wanted to show a lighter side, a lighter touch and you've achieved that within dressing your plate of food. I think the quail has been cooked beautiful, the breast is lovely and pink. You still captured that sweetness that a langoustine has when it's been cooked perfectly. I think you've done a great job here. I like the combination of the quail and the langoustine. I've not had that before. I definitely think it works for me. I felt that the pasta parcel was a little bit flat and probably not needed on this plate. You were juggling with the sauce and with bisque and weren't too sure which way to go. And I think, I think you're just a little bit unsure of your own self. I'm very confident with my dish today. I think it's worthy of semi-finals, but that's just my opinion. I, I just hope that they're going to give me a, a shot and give me another chance. Matt's dish is roast halibut, poached lobster, Spanish carabineros prawn, with a garnish of samphire and spinach, served with lobster bisque and a garlic aioli. Matt, I've got to say, that is a very, very simple-looking plate of food. Yep. But what a punch of flavour you have brought to the table. Wow. Thank you. It's a big and bold and absolutely full of great execution. I love the sweetness of the bisque. It's dark and earthy and almost angry. The fish is beautifully cooked, but what I think is very clever is the way the aioli cuts through the richness of that big, bold bisque. You've made a wonderful bisque and aioli, but there's got to be something more to this dish. Uh, and I hope you're going to find that in you, OK? I think I won the battle of the bisques. So I think, from a flavour point of view, it was a showstopper. From a visual point of view, maybe not so much. Rich has made a bacon dashi risotto with Parma ham crisps, poached langoustine, confit pickled quails egg yolks, pickled black radish, avocado puree and a black garlic emulsion. Finished with grapefruit juice and a chilli and avocado powder. Well, Rich, I've got to say, I don't think I've ever seen a risotto look like that before.
The cookery of the risotto, I think, is very good. I like the bacon and the dashi that comes through. Um, the, the grapefruit is not evident uh, for me, uh, which I think is a good thing. You've got the black garlic and the avocado. There's not enough of those elements to actually make this an outstanding risotto. I think this is the type of dish that Monica and I could debate all day long because it's just so out there. I like the cooking of the rice, I like the dashi, and I like the bacon going through it. I love the beautiful longestines that you put on top, and I like the bacon crisps. I think everything around the outside of the plate doesn't really need to be there. Monica and I are going to need to debate this one a little bit further. <laughs> It's hard to take on the chin. It's like, um, you know, your dad telling you you're, you're rubbish. <laughs> At the same time, you've got to listen to all the positive things that they say uh, too, otherwise the competition would ruin you, wouldn't it? <laughs> Finally, Zoe's dessert is a pistachio and olive oil cake, covered with a golden chocolate dome, accompanied by chocolate gravel, chocolate macaroons, raspberry jelly, and a white chocolate and sesame seed mousse. It is served with a chai chocolate tea. to the moose? It melted. This is the making of a really good dish. The macaroons are a little bit on the hard side. Love the flavour of them though. I love the raspberry tang in the jelly. The mousse has melted a little bit, but it still adds a nice flavour onto the plate. Where's the cake? Where's the pistachio cake? You had a beautiful piece of cake on your bench and you've cut it all down to this little incy wincy portion. Zoe, oh, you've gone so, you've tried so hard, you've given us so much and you're running around at 10,000 miles an hour. I just wish you'd have slowed down a little bit. Uh, the pistachio cake, the raspberry jelly and the flavors of the chocolate all work, but the execution has let you down. You needed to pace yourself. You're getting really stressed in the last five, ten minutes. You can't afford to let that catch up with you because it'll cost you your plate of food at the end of the day. I knew that dish wasn't perfect when I put it up. You know, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when you know how good that could have been. Um, so yeah, not a great day. I think our chefs really felt the pressure in the kitchen today. The tension of the competition is massive right now. Wayne has started to grow in confidence and is starting to show within his cooking. Everything was beautifully cooked on the plate today from Wayne. I just wasn't 100% convinced that the sauce worked with this dish. I really enjoy Arno's cookery. I understand the classic background that he has. What I want to see from Arno is the refinement of his fabulous cookery. That was a first for me, quail with langoustines, and actually worked very well. I was disappointed that there was not enough of that bis to, to taste on the plate, but Arnold is getting there. Every time he comes back in his kitchen, he's getting stronger. Matt's cooking is very good, but when you give me a plate of food that looks like it did today, it's predictable. You and I knew exactly what we were going to eat with Matt's dish. We knew exactly what it was going to taste like, and there was no surprise. This is for a place in the semi-final. And if Matt's going to continue, he's going to have to give us a little bit more on the plate. If I was to get sent home, I'd be gutted. Like, gen genuinely, I'd be gutted. Um, but I've cooked to the best of my ability, and if that's not enough and it's competition, then, you know, so be it. Zoe really did challenge herself today. There's a few things on the plate that weren't working for her. The tempered chocolate wasn't working, the mousse was starting to melt. 
We asked for a showstopper dish, and that's what Zoe wanted to deliver. She just didn't quite get there. I think she just put on a bit too much work in the time allowed for her today. And today I wanted to bring that, you know, theatrical element to it. And unfortunately, I think, you know, maybe style over substance today. And I think I've shot myself in the foot. Rich frustrates me and his cooking excites me at the same time. He doesn't have to show all his ideas in one dish. He's got to be 100% certain every time he puts an element on the dish, it's there for a reason. One thing I do like about Rich, he's digging his heels in. He wants to stay very true to what he believes in. Let's hope that doesn't knock him out of the competition. I think that the judges know that the cooking's there. It's just, are the ideas too much? They either want to see it again, they either want to see where it goes from here, or they've had enough. Chefs, thank you for a great cook-off today. No matter what happens, hold your heads up high that you've done so well to be in our final 10. The chef leaving the competition. Is. Zoe. Best of luck, Zoe. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. To leave at this stage is terrible, but at the same time, I've had such a wicked experience. Maybe I should have simplified things today and I would have got a different response, but I wanted to go out with a bang and I think I did that. <laughs> Come on, guys. Well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> well done, Rich. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling happy, but it hasn't sunk in just yet. I'll probably wake up tomorrow and, and jump for joy. <laughs> uh, it's great. I'm, I'm really, really quite chuffed. I feel very lucky to have got through today. I think um, I stuck to my guns, which I always said I was going to do. But I, I feel very fortunate to be through, definitely. Yeah, I'm pretty relieved. Wow, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. To be in the semi-finals is like, wow, you totally didn't expect it at all. I'm not going to take it for granted and really sort of focus and push on. Okay. Well done, guys. Next time, the second group of chefs battle it out for a place in the semi-finals. It could make me or break me, really. It's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be easy. I think this dish is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs>